Chapter 7, Section 1, Rigid Motion in a Plane. In this section, in this chapter, we're going to talk about the three types of transformations, reflection, rotation, and translation. Um, you might have heard different words for these. A reflection is sometimes called a flip. A rotation is sometimes called like turning. Um, and then translation is often called a slide or you're just moving um, a shape over. Um, the proper terms are the reflection, rotation, and translation. So that's what we're going to use um, throughout this chapter. New figures that have been reflected, rotated, or translated are called the image. So after you've reflected, rotated, or translated, that shape or that figure is called the image. The original figure that you start with is called the pre-image. Um, the prefix pre means before, so the pre-image is the shape that's there before you reflect, rotate, or translate. Naming transformations, um, use the graph below. One thing that I want to point out really quickly is that um, if you notice we have D, E, and F for one, labeling one triangle, and then we also have these D, and it looks like a little apostrophe, E and F all looking like they have a little apostrophe in the third quadrant of that graph. What the apostrophes tell us, you read it as D prime, E prime, and F prime, and that means that that's the shape that has been moved or trans, uh, that's the one that has, um, that is there after the transformation has occurred. A says name and describe the transformation. So to go from the original triangle in the first quadrant, triangle D, E, F, to the um, D prime, E prime, and F prime triangle in the third quadrant, what type of transformation would that be? Um, if you can tell, we couldn't just flip it over and get um, D to match with D prime, F with F prime, and E with E prime. So it's not going to be a reflection. Um, it also has been, we can't just slide it, we can't just move it over and then match up. So it's not going to be a translation. This transformation is a rotation. B says name the co coordinates of the vertices of the image. Remember we just said image is the one that has been moved. So after the rotation, that is the image. The pre-image is the original. So the pre-image is D, E, F. The image is D prime, E prime, F prime. The coordinates of the vertices, we have F prime at negative 2, 0. E prime at negative 3, negative 2, and D prime at negative 1, negative 3. C asks, is triangle DEF congruent to its image? If you look at these two triangles, um, a really fast and easy way without having to do the distance formula or any of that stuff is to just kind of count this kind of the slope between the two points. So between F and E, you would go up one over, or up two over one. To go from F prime to E prime, you would go down two and over one. So it's kind of gonna be the same um, distance between those two points. And that works for all three um, segments of this triangle. So we can say that it is congruent to its image. Um, of course, you could use the distance formula and find the slopes and all of that stuff. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to very generally say yes, we can say that it is congruent. An isometry is a transformation that preserves lengths, angle measures, parallel lines, and distances between points. These are also called rigid transformations. So when we see the word isometry, that means that the shape itself has just been moved, it has not actually changed um, other than its position. So an isometry, the shape isn't going to get larger, it's not going to be smaller, all of the sides are going to be congruent to the original shape, 
and all of the angles are going to be congruent to the original shape. Identifying isometries, which of the following transformations to appear to be isometries? And I'm actually going to go ahead and name the transformations also. A, if you notice, we have the horizontal line. We have two triangles, and they do, are um, congruent, or they appear to be congruent. So it would be an isometry. And this type of transformation would be a reflection. In B, um, the two circles, again, appear to be congruent. So we would say that this would be an isometry. Um, the type of rotate or the type of transformation this is is a rotation. I gave it away there. And then C, these two pentagons again appear to be congruent. If because they seem to be congruent, we would call it an isometry. And this type of transformation is a translation. Um, if you notice, I just want to point out a couple of things. Um, a is a reflection. Notice that the line going between them would be the line that they have been reflected over. You are, um, generally speaking, you will see a line of reflection um, where the two lines have been flipped over, or when the two where the two figures have been flipped over. Oh, excuse me. In B, it is a rotation. Um, a lot of times, again. Notice that you have the dot in the center of these two shape, the two circles, and then you have a line going from the uh, the circle from the point to the circle, and that would be the point of rotation. So you have a line of reflection and a point of rotation, and notice that those are illustrated in these pictures. An isometry, not so much. It's just going to be the same shape moved. Um, this first, this next example um, says triangle GHJ is mapped onto triangle UVW. Um, when we say that GHJ is mapped onto, that means that we started with GHJ, we moved it to triangle UVW. The mapping is a translation given triangle GHJ was mapped onto, notice it's the arrow means that it's been mapped onto, is um, to triangle UVW is an isometry, UV equals 8, the measure of angle H equals 37 degrees, find the length of GH and the measure of angle V. Because we know that these two triangles are congruent because it is an isometry, think back to when we talked about congruent shapes or congruent polygons. Um, when we were writing a congruent statement, remember that corresponding parts of how we named the triangle or the rectangle or so on had to be the congruent pieces. That's the true for um, writing translations also. So based on how these two triangles are written, we can say that angle G is congruent to angle U, angle H is congruent to angle V, and angle J is congruent to angle W because of the order in which the points are written. I've gone ahead and I've drawn the two triangles, and I've gone ahead and marked that UV is 8 and the measure of angle H is 37. That's the information that they gave me. Then it asked me to find the length of GH. Well, if you notice, GH, based on um, the notation that they've used in the problem, GH should be congruent to UV. GH is the first two points of the, that triangle. UV is the first two points of the second triangle. So because UV is 8, GH is also going to be 8. The same thing happens for H and V. Um, angle H is in the middle of the notation. Angle V is also in the middle of the notation. So because angle H is 37 degrees, angle V is 37 degrees. The next example says the coordinates of triangle JKL are j at 1, 1, k at negative 2, 4, l at negative 2, negative 1. The coordinates of j, a triangle j prime, k prime, l prime are j prime at 2, negative 3, k prime at negative 1, 0, and l prime at negative 1, negative 5. First of all, I've gone ahead and I've graphed these on my coordinate plane. Number one asks me to name and describe the transformation. Remember my original? 
would be starting in blue how I wrote these, but my original would be just point J, K, and L. After my transformation would be J, J prime, K prime, L prime. This transformation, um, if you look at it, we could just kind of move them over and they would be on top of each other. So there hasn't been any reflection and there hasn't been any rotation. This transformation is a translation. And number two says, is this an isometry? I could use the distance formula um, to find all of the side lengths, but this is pretty simple to do. You can tell that K, uh, segment KL and segment K prime L prime are congruent because both of them are going to be five, um, five units long. You can also just kind of count kind of the slope from L prime to J prime. It would be up two and to the right three. From point L to point J, again, it's up two and to the right three. Same thing's going to work for K, K, J, and K prime, J prime. Now, if they wanted me to prove this, then I would need to go ahead and use the distance formula to use the side, side, side congruence postulate. However, because this is just, is, um, is, it's just asking, is this an isometry? I can just kind of generally use what I just said. So the answer would be yes, it is an isometry, meaning that the two triangles are congruent. And then number three says, if the measure of angle K equals 45 degrees, find the measure of angle K prime. Well, those would be co corresponding congruent parts of these two congruent triangles. So if angle K is 45 degrees, angle K prime is also 45 degrees. The next example says, the blades on a windmill are tilted to catch wind, which then turns them. How are blades A and B related? And B says, explain how knowing how the blades are related helps, the, helps to build the windmill. What is the measure of the angle between blade A and blade B? Um, A and B are related because, remember, we're talking about the transformations. Um, A and B would be related because of a rotation. Um, this is a pretty common sense answer. If you think about a windmill, it goes around and around and around. It's constantly rotating. That's when it's spinning, it's rotating. So, um, the, so what is the measure of the angle between blade A and blade B? If you look at those lines, notice there is a point of rotation right in the very center, the solid uh, blue point. That point of rotation, if you look at the line going from that point to A and uh, blade A and that point to blade B, you'll notice that it's a straight line, and remember a straight line measures 180 degrees. So the measure of, of the angle between blade A and blade B would be 180 degrees. Today's assignment is on page 399. It's numbers 12 through 38 even.